Hey, Viola, are there some musts that should be in the medical history form? Find out today on Medical History Mysteries. Okay, so you have to keep it kind of simple for me. I have a medical history form. I look at it every appointment. I update it every time we see our patients. I think I'm doing the right thing, but I can't help but wonder if there's things that absolutely positively should be in the medical history form. Can you enlighten me? I've seen at this point in my career, over a thousand, I'm sure, medical history forms of different kinds and different types. And my greatest complaint has always been that I, I truly believe that medical history forms should be system-based. You should be able to go from system to system. Instead of this endless checklist of potential diseases and illnesses a patient might have, you should be able to go from system to system and say, okay, let's talk about your cardiovascular disease or your heart condition. You know, Do you have one? What are the different types of heart disease you have? Do you have hypertension? Do you have congestive heart failure? Do you have an arrhythmia? And, and by asking those questions in group together, number one, it stimulates our memory, but also stimulates the patient's memory to, to recall things that they might have that they would have lumped together because it all has to do with their heart, but may not remember because it's this endless list of little check boxes. And so I'd go cardiovascular first because of course that's usually the uh, prime offender, then diabetes, then maybe respiratory. But the point is I'd want to know about systems first so then I can ask more informed questions about, for example, you have diabetes, what was your latest day one state? I mean, that matters because we want to know how tight control they have over their diabetes and whether or not if, they're, if they don't have such tight control, what the manifestations are going to be that, of that in your oral cavity. Same thing with cardiovascular disease. You know, I tell my students all the time, unless you're born with it, no one just wakes up one day and has congestive heart failure. So how'd you get that? Was it years of unsustained and uncontrolled hypertension? And if so, what can we do about it? So what medications do you take for that? Are you compliant? So it's, it's a thought process, but it's also a way to generate a conversation. And the greatest feedback I get from this, Pam, I'm sure you've heard it when you've been at my lectures is, that's not realistic, Viola. I don't have 25 minutes to talk about a medical history. But when you group those thoughts together, they work faster and you can get more information in less time. So you can get more information yet be more time efficient with your patient? Right. And it stimulates you to do things that maybe you wouldn't do, like take vitals. Like I know some offices take blood pressures and pulses on every patient, every time. Some offices, if they do surgeries, only take it for surgical patients. Some offices don't do it at all. But if I'm talking to you about your cardiovascular disease as the patient, and I say to you, how'd you get congestive heart failure? Well, I've had hypertension. The thought's got to pop in your head at that moment. Gee, maybe we should take the blood pressure and see what it is, you know, find out where we are today. And it's going to be the same thing for diabetes. We're talking about diabetes, talking about A1Cs. So did you do the routine check you know, for the potential for complications from diabetes? Have you asked about neuropathy? Have you asked about you know, the potential for uh, a breakdown in their skin and mucosa? Have you asked about xerostomia, which is also pretty common? Have they eaten today? You know, All those things sort of add up. Respiratory disease, I have asthma, great. Did you bring your inhaler? It's just a way of kind of folding thoughts together to make it faster, more efficient, and, and overall more productive. Okay, so systems-based and vitals, what else? I wanna know if you've ever had a history of, or if you have a current issue with substance abuse. I can't say it enough. We don't like to ask it, it's awkward. It's not something that comes up in conversation generally, but you know what the new mandates for opioid education, that's part of it. You have to be able to ask that question. So if you're going to prescribe opioids, you've got to be able to ask that question and get an affirmative or negative answer and, and write it down or enter it in your EHR because it's got to be documented. But also, I want to know that because that loops into other things. Like what if, you, what if someone's doing cocaine or someone's doing other stimulants? That's going to affect their blood pressure. That's going to affect their resistance to anesthesia. It's going to be the same thing with cannabis. Cannabis use so, is so widespread now. And it's not even limited to really one particular age group. 
then I really want to know anybody who's using cannabis because again, cannabis raises heart rate, cannabis raises blood pressure and cannabis makes you resistant to local anesthetics. So I've got to ask that question. It's got to be prominent and I can't forget to ask it because it's required based on some of the reg regulations that are out there now. So it's required that you ask about cannabis use and substance abuse? Well, substance abuse, yeah. In almost every state that has an opioid education requirement, that's part of it. Did you ask about a previous or current you know, issue with substances? Because that's going to determine whether or not you're going to prescribe that opioid in many cases. Okay, so I know also the types of medications that patients take and their allergies. That's kind of a standard one as well. What about some pie in the sky, good to know, but information we probably should know that will pertain to dentistry. Right, so I'm glad you brought it up, man, because this is the way it usually goes in a, in, a, in a medical history. Any changes to your medications? The answer is always no. I wanna know your medications. So give me your list or at least rattle off the medications that you do take. But I'm gonna do that when I'm taking their systems-based medical history, right? I'm gonna ask about the medications they take. Allergies, that comes in hardly ever. It's usually like a checkbox, you know, any allergies, any medications, latex, you know, whatever. But I want to know more specifics, like not are you allergic, are you sensitive to it? For example, asthmatics you may not be allergic per se to NSAIDs, but they're more sensitive to the effects of NSAIDs via, via the, the way that NSAIDs can cause bronchoconstriction. So I need to know that. Do you have a sulfite allergy? Well, I don't know. I drink red wine and I, I get flushed. Is that an allergy or not? Do I need to know that? Because again, if I'm gonna use epinephrine, we know every cartridge of epinephrine is preserved with sulfites or you know, sulfites are used as an antioxidant. So again, those are, those are the things I need to know. Besides the usual stuff like latex and so on, I wanna dig a little deeper too and say, what are you sensitive to? And what have you used to treat that sensitivity? Was Benadryl enough? Or did you really need to go to the ER to get up an effort? Those are all things that maybe a patient doesn't think that mention when you're taking the medical history. But if you prompt them with the right question, you know, they'll usually give that information to you. They also don't really think about it because they think they're just at the dentist or they're just getting their teeth cleaned. And they might not think to share this information with us because they might not realize how pertinent it is. A lot of people say that to me in the clinic all the time. Why do you need to know that? You're working here. You know, and I, I often said that, well, that's because this is attached to this, but I could always get the chainsaw and take care of that tomorrow if you want. So the point is this, this whole idea that dentistry doesn't need to know about the rest of my body is going away. And you and I both know, and we've been around long enough to know that we used to treat them like two different patients, right? A dental patient and a medical patient. And now we're starting to see the convergence and, and it really is that one patient, but we're more involved than ever. And a lot of people out there know I serve as an expert witness in litigation. And that's come up a lot in the cases where I've been called to testify. Should the dentist have known, the hygienist have known that this patient had this condition and could, should a dentist or hygienist have taken steps to mitigate the risk of a medical emergency? Okay, well, we definitely would like to avoid that, that's for sure. So yeah. I'm gonna ask you a favor. Sure. This is gonna be bad, but I'm gonna ask. Okay. I think I want you to look at my medical history form and I'm going to see, I know, I think it's pretty good, but I'm not you. And so I think it'll be interesting to see what you have to say about it. And let's see how many areas of improvement, let's call it that, are All on right. medical history form. And maybe we'll go from there. I am. I will be very gentle, but also thorough. How about that? <laughs> All right. Challenge accepted. I love it. Well, thank you for this. I think this was really useful. And I think that if anything you get out of this video, you should know that dentists and dentists, dental hygienists need to know this information. So take a look at your medical history, make sure that it's up to date, make sure that the information that you need to know is there. And I also think we might need to go system by system. So maybe we can see exactly how you get through this medical history so fast. It's a good idea. Let's make that the subject of our next couple of videos. Just, let's just go system by system and see if you're the prudent hygienist or hygienist, what questions would you ask if a patient says, I have this disease? Sounds great. Okay. Well, we'll see you next week on Medical History Mysteries. Thanks, Pam.
Thank you.